Hello. Hello, Sister Yvette. How you guys doing? Is it is today the day that the um what is it called? The um Boys to Men? Um Boys to Men. I'm cold, y'all. Forgive me. Uh Boys to Men special is coming on. It's today the day. Cause um I don't want to hold y'all too long. Put my jacket back on because her sister a little nipped in. All right. How is everyone's day been? So, we are going to talk about what the Lord showed me. Glory to God. Hey, Sister Keisha, in prayer this morning. Now, y'all got all kind of reader glasses. I just need to see which one is going to let me see my notes, right? Because I want to get... Uh, no, these ain't going to work. Um, So, I want to get real clear about what the Lord spoke. So... Hallelujah. Is it boys to men? Hey, Sister Yvette. Hey, Keisha. Hey, Brother Humphrey. Bishop. Bishop, how you doing? New edition. I said boys to men. Y'all pray for me. So I ain't going to keep y'all on here because I think that comes on tonight, right? So um, I know black folk want to get to the new edition special. So I want to show share with you all what the Lord shared with me this morning in prayer. Um. And let's just pray, amen, before this word goes forth to make sure it falls upon good ground of God's people. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word is life. It is truth. It is everlasting. God, I pray that the soil of the hearts of your sons and your daughters, I'm excited, even praying, uh, that this word falls upon good ground and it produces 40, 60, and 100 fold. You said that unless the word falls to the ground and dies, it cannot produce much fruit. So God, we thank you for the much that is going to be produced from this word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, cousin. Hey, cousin. How you doing? Hey, sister O'Bannon, fitness guru. Y'all need to get with her so she can get y'all bodies tight. Did anybody get a chance to look at Proverbs today or Ecclesiastes? Did anybody get a chance to meditate on those scriptures? Did anybody get a chance? Hey, Sister Bolden. So, Ecclesiastes, this used to be one of my favorite scriptures, okay, back in the day. And somewhere, I got away from it. And the Lord took me back there today. Chapter 2, starting in verse 21, and we're going to jump to verse 25, and then I'm going to share with you, we're going to jump to Proverbs 13, and we're going to read that, and then I'm going to tell you what the Lord showed me. For Proverbs, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 2.21 says, for who can eat, who can have enjoyment without God? For to this person who pleases God, he gives wisdom, he gives knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, to the unbeliever, to those who are living outside of a relationship with God, he gives the work of gathering, hold on to this, of gathering, collecting, heaping up so that he may give it to the one who pleases God. Anybody on here who would say, I think I'm doing okay with pleasing God in this season of my life. I ain't perfect, right? I ain't perfect, but I do okay with trying to please God. When I, when I mess up, I say, Lord, forgive me. Hallelujah. I try to make things right. I try to live right. I ain't perfect. Hallelujah. But I can say that I am the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus only because of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs, it goes on to say in verse 25 and 26 in Ecclesiastes 2, it says, for who can eat and have enjoyment? Okay, okay, never mind. Go back up to 21. It says, for there is a man who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill and gives his legacy all that he has labored for. And this too... It, you know, we know Solomon was tripping because he was doing all of this stuff 
And he said, all of this is vanity. When he realized all he was trying to do to gather up all of this wealth and realizing really God is in control. I don't care what I try to do. God is in control. So he said, all of this is vanity. Okay, jump down, jump to Proverbs 13, verses 17 and 18 and 21 and 22. He is storing up the wealth of the wicked, hallelujah, for the believer. Hey, uh, Sister King needs somebody to type out the scriptures. She says she's hard of hearing and she can't catch them. So the first one is Ecclesiastes 2. Verse 21, 25, and 26. And the other is Proverbs 13, 17, and 18, and 21, and 22. Amen. So here we go. Proverbs 13 says, Irresponsible talk, this is verse 17, makes a real mess of things. But a reliable reporter, hear me, a reliable reporter, somebody who's speaking the truth, he says, is a healing presence. Refuse anyone who refuses discipline will end up lacking. Anybody that don't want nobody to tell them that they wrong, they think they always right. Can't nobody teach them nothing. They're not teachable, coachable, trainable. Lord forbid they're in leadership and standing in any type of authority. They, The Bible says that person is going to end up in poverty. Embarrassed because they did not receive correction. Their life is not honorable. Ecclesiastes 2, 21, 25, and 26. Proverbs 13, 17, 18, 21, and 22. It goes on to say, disaster entraps that person, but God's loyal people, God's loyal people, those who have remained faithful to God, no matter what's going on, no matter who's in the White House, no matter what's going on in your church, in your community, glory to God, he says, those who have remained loyal, he said, you're going to get a good life. He said, a good life will not get past you, you, your children, or your grandchildren. Hey, Sister Boxley. He said, but ill-gotten wealth will end up with good people. Ill-gotten wealth will end up with God's children. Y'all used to hear in that scripture and it's read like this. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Well, I think it's important that I define what wicked is. See, because we get all, you know, all, you know, Christian. Well, I don't want to call people wicked. I don't. I don't want to call people sinners. Well, let's just define what it is so we all on the same page. Okay, so a wicked person is someone who is not righteous. A wicked person is someone who is ungodly. They do not follow God. They do not have a relationship with God. Then it goes on to say the ungodly, listen, is someone who will not follow the law. They want to do things their way. The wicked is someone who is without law. They 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 going to do it their way. I know that's the law, but I'm smart. I, I can get around stuff because I'm smart. Mm. Okay, so it says someone who blasphemes God. Someone who does not believe that they ever have to repent. That they ever have to say, I'm sorry to other people or to God. That they ever have to ask for forgiveness. That's the wicked. Now, this ain't this ain't Sister Tuesday. This ain't Dr. Tuesday. This ain't minister. This ain't elder. This ain't prophetess. That's the defin that's Webster's de- de- definition. That ain't even the Bible's definition. So a wicked person is a person who has corrupt ways. Their ways are corrupt. They they uh they can be a little vicious. Mm-hmm. And vindictive, a wicked person. They, they, yeah. 
I hope y'all following me. One of the other definitions of a wicked person, because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Another definition of wicked is lawless. Lawless. The Bible talks about there being lawlessness in the land. A person who is lawless is someone who has no regard for the law. They, they actually take opportunity to invoke violence. Mm -hmm. If they can cause, oh, I hope y'all following me. Jesus, Jesus. If they can cause situations, mindsets, attitudes to provoke violence, that's a lawless person. Mm -hmm. They may create the atmosphere. They may create the situation, but they're going to step back from it. They're not going to get their hands dirty. <laughs> Lawlessness. Good God almighty. They are without law. They are, they are, they don't feel that they are controlled by the law. Uh-huh. Uh, they are unbridled. They are unbridled with their tongue. They can, they feel like they can say whatever they want to say. That's a lawless person. They can say whatever they want to say because they're not under the same confines of law and order, mm -hmm, of doing things uh, rightly and respecting the law. And if you're not respecting the law, that means you're not respecting people. Uh-huh. And they're unruly. They're unrestrained. Uh-huh. And the root of lawlessness, I hope y'all hearing me, is pride. A lawless person's primary character is arrogance. There's no humility. There's no humility. They don't see a need to ever ask God or anybody else for forgiveness, they're not going to apologize. A lawless person's nature is almost that similar to someone who may be kind of a narcissist. <laughs> they don't think they got to ask for forgiveness. They don't need God because their way is their way. They are the law. They are the order. Okay, so this is what wickedness, one of the definitions of a wicked person is that they are lawless. They operate in lawlessness. So, so it's a Tuesday. What you telling us? Well, the Lord said to let us know that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Okay, because we read, we read Ecclesiastes 2 and 21. 25 and 26. We looked at Proverbs 17, 8. Proverbs 21 and 22 goes on to say this. Evil pursues sinners, but the consistently upright and right standing with God, God is, has a record. Oh, oh, that devil. He's trying, mm-hmm, because I know this is going to help somebody. Don't you even try it. Don't, don't try to kick me off, devil. So, he said to let you all know, God's recompense for the righteousness of God, this is, this is Proverbs 21 and 22, a good man leaves this inheritance and it's moral and it's good and he leaves it for his children and his children's children, but to the sinner, he commands them. He commands them to store it up, and eventually they will have to turn it over because it is the will of the Lord. The scripture goes on to say that Pharaoh had raised up, he had to remind Pharaoh, it is my power because I think sometimes as we're looking at what's going on, the blood, actually, absolutely, as we're looking at what's going on in the country, I'm not here to talk about uh, our the president of the United States. I'm really not. But this is what the Lord told me this morning. As I was praying for the president, as I was praying for the office of the president, as I was praying that God saves the soul of Donald Trump, 
because that's my prayer, and that God turns the hearts of those who are in leadership and everybody that he has placed in his administration are either millionaires or billionaires. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Now, I just told y'all what wicked meant. This ain't my definition. This is God's definition. From him all the way down, everyone is, they ain't even just rich. They just like crazy state. I mean, that DeVos lit billionaires, right? The wealth of the wicked, you better hear me. Now, let me say this. This is what the Holy Spirit said. Because I kept saying, but God, how can I say they're anointed for wealth? Anointing comes from you. He reminded me. There was a man's anointing. Y'all help, please. There was a man's anointing that was put on Saul. But there was a God's anointing that was put on David. Anybody got a David's anointing because you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you have a relationship. That is the hand of God being upon you. See, the people cry for a king. Y'all, the people cry for a king. Give us a king. I've read, I've read that people said that uh, Donald Trump was the answer to God's prayer. No, I believe he was the answer to man's prayer. <laughs> But God's going to use him, beloved. God's going to use him. Hallelujah. Okay, let's check out what Romans 9 says. Let's check out what Romans 9. Go to Romans 9, verses 17 and 18. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Check out verses 22 and 23. And this is what the word says in Romans 9. For the scripture says that Pharaoh, I have raised. Pharaoh, I have raised you up, not Cyprus. I have raised you up for this very purpose of displaying my power. In dealing with you, in dealing with you, Pharaoh, I've raised you up so I could deal with you. I hope y'all following me because I don't want to be the only one that's getting happy about what the Lord is saying. Glory to God. He said, I'm dealing with you, Pharaoh. I've raised you up to deal with you. He says, so that my name, my name, Jehovah, God, almighty, the great I am, my name will be proclaimed throughout the whole world. I've raised you up. Not the evangelicals who said you were liking on to Cyprus, because I declare right now for everybody all across the world that's going to hear this message, I still say today that he ain't liking unto to Cyprus. I pray, I'm praying for Donald Trump. I'm praying for his soul. I'm praying for the position of the presidency. See, you can't claim what God is saying about the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the just if you're not praying for those at the top. You can't. Your hand's dirty. Your heart ain't right. Come on, somebody. You can't be asking God for stuff when your dog him out. Now, should you speak the truth about what he's doing, what he said? Absolutely. But you need to pray for his soul. I'm just saying. Okay. So this is what you got to understand. Cyprus was a king. The Cyprus was a king who did not believe in God. Okay. He didn't believe in God. But the Bible says, historians says, theologians say that Cyprus was a king who did right by the people. Even when he captured a land, when he took another nation, he provided those people with their own space that they could flourish and they could grow and they could live and they could advance. He let them worship their own gods. He was not a wicked king. He wasn't a wicked king. He actually had what today we would call programs. <laughs> he was... Maybe he was a, okay, I ain't gonna say that. Cyrus was a king. I might've said Cyprus, but I meant Cyrus that they keep saying Isaiah 45. He was a king that did right by the people. He provided programs. He provided outlets. He provided resources for even those people that when he captured the land, when he brought the children of Israel out of 70 years of captivity, this is the challenge that I have with the evangelical saying that, that, uh, Trump, the president of the United States, is likened unto Cyrus. This is the issue. He can't be because we ain't in captivity. He didn't have to come and rescue us. There are several things that do not line up. 
except for the fact that he's the 45th president and he has not declared God, Jesus Christ, as his Lord and Savior. Now, those two things he and Cyrus do have in common. Now, I may say maybe he's more likened unto King Nab, maybe likened unto Saul. Mm. But, you know, I ain't here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the just. Now, hear me. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. There is, There was a man's anointing on Saul. They asked for a king, and God gave them a king. But God had chosen who was to be king. God's anointing, God's hand. See, there's a difference between God doing something and blessing something and anointing something versus God allowing something. He allowed Saul. Mm -hmm. But he anointed and called forth David and he put his hand, glory to God, upon David. I hope y'all following me. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Okay, so this is what the Lord said to me. Go on in Romans chapter 9 and it keep reading. And it says, I, I allowed you to, to, to rise up, Pharaoh. I did it so that my glory could be revealed. He said, and he said, the hardness of your heart, the stubbornness, the unyielding. He said, it's going to be for my will. The way you are, Pharaoh, Saul, Neb, anybody else with them characteristics, the way you are, he said, this is going to be for my glory. I allowed you. I allowed you to do this because I'm about to show forth my glory. I'm about to show everybody who I really am because I allowed you to rise up against my people. I put you in that position, okay? I allowed it or I did it. I preached a sermon years ago. Uh, one of my first sermons I preached at Eastern Star when I first got called to ministry. Either God allowed it or God did it, but either way, he's in control. Come on, somebody. So he goes on to say in Romans chapter 9, he says this. What if, this is what Paul says, what if God fully intending to show his wrath and to make known his power and authority has tolerated with great patience the vessels of his anger, which are ripe for destruction? Who's right for destruction? Those who are outside of his will, those who are not in relationship. He said, what if? What if, what if, what if God has allowed this for his glory, for his name's sake, to show forth his power? He said, for the purposes of being made known his glory. What, what, if, what if God allowed all of this just so that he could show forth his glory? And he said it was all done beforehand. So, as people are saying that he's the answer to prayer, I'm not sure if he's the answer to uh, the righteousness of God's prayer. I don't care who said it. You could be apostle of apostles of apostles. It ain't lining up with scripture, okay? If you're comparing him to Cyrus just because it's he's the 45th president, what, I could go find a scripture because he's 70. Don't See, this is the thing you got to understand about prophecy, beloved. It can't be part. It has to be all. It has to be all. If if God has, if something's been prophesied, it has to meet the full standard, the jot and tittle of the prophecy. You, you don't get to claim part of it, but not all of it. So, but I ain't here to talk about that. So the wealth of the wicked, because the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter eight, it is God who gives us the power to gain wealth. So, this is what the Lord said to me this morning in prayer. He said, I, matter of fact, when you get a chance, I want you to read all of Deuteronomy 8. Don't, don't just grab the part about uh, it is him who gives us power to gain wealth. It, 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 you got to read the whole thing of Deuteronomy 8. But this is what's awesome. He said, I want you, the body of Christ, to tap in, and I'm going to read it just how the Lord gave me. I want you to tap in and call on the ability to gain wealth that comes from me. He said, and the wisdom 
of good ethical and integral business dealings with people who are of the same mind. He said, because those who are sitting high over the United States that even on our money has in God, we trust. He said, I, what if I, if you trust me and you believe my word in Ecclesiastes, you believe my word in Proverbs, you believe my word. In Deuteronomy 8, if you believe my word that the wealth of the wicked, I told you what wicked represented. Where if for someone to say that someone is the, okay, now I didn't get hot, glory to God. He said for someone to say that someone is the answer to God's prayer when they have said that Jesus is a man to be admired. That's what he said. He's a man to be admired. He admires his fearlessness. That's what he said. And so again, I would say to you, I present to you, I'm not here to um, debate your political position, but don't be careful about jumping on people's bandwagons about what they're saying lining up something to scripture because you can make anything fit scripture honey the, the the married person can say that's my spouse that's my husband but they married good god almighty that ain't that ain't lining up that's called adultery good god almighty you want to pray <laughs> p-r-a-y pray about this person being my spouse but know what you really doing is p-r-e-y uh-huh because they already married so you can make anything line up to scripture, but you bet that's why you need two or three witnesses. That's why you need two or three scriptures to support something. See, prophecy, you got to be careful. People can prophesy something all day long, but if it ain't no word that's backing it up, you better go pray always. That, that's why I used to do my classes on how to really understand prophecy. I think I need to go back to doing those because because it's too many. Mm, yeah, the Bible calls it. I'll say it because the Bible calls it prophet line. We listen. It can't just be one thing that makes something from God. It has to all line up. So God said, because wealth exponential Three zeros times four is sitting over this country that on our money, it says in God, we trust God said you who are righteous, you who are good, you who try to keep your hands clean and your heart pure. And this ain't got nothing to do with being perfect. This has to do with being a child of God who out of your mouth, have confessed Jesus as Savior and Lord. Out of your mouth, even if you are in a place of confusion, you are in a place of disappointment, you're not sure where God is right now, you're questioning everything that is going on in your life. Hallelujah. If you ain't turned from God, you still might be questioning, because let's be clear, Jesus questioned, where are you? Where art thou? Come on now. If it's possible, can you take this cup from me? Stop telling people to stop questioning God. Jesus questioned God. Stop it. Listen. You who are righteous, the Bible says, you who are just, you are just, you who are just, the just shall live by faith. The just are those who are forgiven of their sins. The just are those who have confessed Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. You got to have, ask God for forgiveness to be considered just, to be considered a Christian. Yeah, someone can say, I, I know that that person is a Christian. They can say that. But if they've never confessed Jesus Christ, if they've never repented, hear me. Let me, let me help you with something. People who are all self-consuming, I'm not talking about vanity or ego, you know, all that, whatever. I'm talking about somebody that everything is always about them. You got to, first of all, you got to pray, right? But that's really called a narcissist. And narcissists have no need for forgiveness. They have no need for repentance because they're right. They're always right. And they're always the smartest thing in the room and they always know everything. And so this isn't about somebody who think they know everything. This is somebody who lives their life under no submission to the law. 
It's their way. They do it their way. They don't turn over things that they're supposed to turn over because that's just what we do because we want our hands clean. We want everything above board. I hope y'all following me. Okay. So God said for you believers. Okay. I need to put my glasses on y'all. I turned 50 in four months. So Jesus. Yeah. 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 But you are the righteousness of God, sister Carla. Amen. So listen, this is what the Lord said. Because you are the righteousness of God, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for you. The just Proverbs 13. Deuteronomy 8, Ecclesiastes, pardon me, 2. Read those scriptures. Meditate on those scriptures. And the Lord said, now, it's a couple of people on here that can uh, testify of the Lord's gifting that he's given me. I'm very clear about my prophetic mantle. I'm very clear. I, I, I struggled with it for years. I struggled with it for years, for years. Wouldn't call myself, wouldn't, and I don't need it on nothing. It ain't got to be on a title. It ain't got to be on a fly. It ain't got to be on a card. I'm real clear. So it's a few people. It's a few people. It's a few people on here that can testify that uh, God has given me a few things over the years that have come to pass. Mm, hallelujah. Hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. You who are just, you are just, hey, sister levels, you who are just, you tap in to the wealth that is sitting over this country. You tap in to the business acumen that is sitting over this country. You ain't got to agree with them, but you got to pray for them because the Bible commands us to pray for those who are in authority. That's what we are to do. So you pray for him, you pray ultimately for his soul to be saved, and you pray for the wisdom of God. Even though, to date, I have not read or heard anywhere from his mouth that he has confessed Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. But you can pray for that. And you can pray for the wisdom of God over him and his cabinet. Now, let me be clear. Do not just pray for him because the people he has put in place are the ones who are making decisions right now. He is signing, honey, he, he didn't ran out of ink and he only been two days. Glory to God. He's signing everything. Come on. You got to pray. You got to pray for the office of the president. You have to pray for Donald Trump. You got to pray for his soul to be saved. That's what God wants. But remember what I read. In Romans chapter 9, what if, what if I, I allowed this to show forth my glory? What if I did this to show forth my glory? Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, King Saul, you asked for a king? All right, I gave you a king, but right here is what I wanted. It is not God's will. For his people to be oppressed. You better hear me. That ain't God. It is not God's will for his people to be oppressed. Now, as far as I know, we were not in bondage as a people, as the children of Israel were when Cyrus came and got them out. Okay, we, we weren't, I don't think we was. Was we in bondage, y'all? Was we, was we in slavery? God will get the glory. Yes, he will. Because that's what he said. That's what he said. Now, see... Those who know me, because this is my ultimate assignment in the earth is to minister the word of God as God's prophet, minister of the gospel. This, this is who I am. I thank God for the business uh, knowledge that he's given me. I thank God. But ultimately, my passion is to bring people into their purpose, whether I'm preaching the word or I'm teaching or I'm prophesying or I'm doing something on the business side. But those who know me know I ain't going to say nothing until I got a word. I got a word this morning. That's why I'm doing this. I got a word. I got a word that the Lord said I can tap into this because I don't want to see we break spiritual laws all the time. I don't want to break any spiritual laws. I don't want to break any spiritual laws. We break natural laws and we break spiritual laws. And so for me to speak on anything, I have to have the word of God. I have to have a word. You can't you can't live without a word. Abraham didn't live without a word. My God, he got the word and had to wait on that thing and go love on his wife for 25 years because he had a word. 
David got a word that you was going to be king. It's you I've chosen, but they asked for a king, so I gave him a king. Good God Almighty. Hear what the Lord is saying. David had to wait 24. 15 years before he came into his kingdom. I got to have a word. When I get a word, I can stand on it and I can use that word. You got to chew on that word to manifest. You got to declare that word. The word has already been decreed because it's written, but you got to declare it. You got to open your mouth and speak. Thus saith the Lord over your life to see it manifest. <sighs> Tap into Tap into and call on, this is what the Lord said, tap into and call on the ability to gain wealth in this season. That will come from him. That will come from God. He said, tap into and call upon God for the wisdom, for good, ethical, integral, and business dealings with people who are of the same mind. You can call up on it and it will flow. You can call up on it from heaven as you are praying for Donald Trump, for the office of the president, for the cabinet positions, as you are praying for them, praying for souls to be saved, praying for the wisdom, the heart of God, as it relates to the policies that are coming against our education system, the policies that are coming against health care, against women issues, against child care, all of these things, you got to pray. If nothing else, this is what I know. This election has caused us to pray. <laughs> then brought us back to Jesus. Look at that. Because he going to get the glory. His name will be held high. That's what he said. That's what he said over in Romans chapter nine. So I pray for each of you that you tap into what God has made available to you. Read Ecclesiastes two again, verses two, 21 and 25 and 26. Read Proverbs 13 verses 17, 18, 21 and 22. Romans chapter 9, verses 17 and 18, 22 and 23, and then all then uh, uh, Deuteronomy 8, starting at about verse 7 through 20. Read it. Read it. You're going to be blessed. And hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. The wealth of the wicked. The wealth of the wicked. The wealth of those who have not called upon the name of the Lord. The wealth of those, who have, of those who have stored it up and heaped it up only for them. Where do you read about them giving away anything to help the poverty stricken? Those who have taken all their wealth to heap it up to build big, beautiful buildings and drive big, fancy cars and do not acknowledge God for what he has done on the cross or in their lives, what Jesus has done on the cross or what God and through Jesus' sacrifice has done in their lives, he said to them, he will make them, he will cause them to store it up and hand it over to you. You better claim that. Call it forth. Put it in my hand, God. So right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we call forth the anointing that comes from you to gain wealth. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, everyone who is under the sound of my voice on this message right now, those who will listen to it later, those who will receive it. Father, I pray that the wealth that you have for the kingdom of God, for the righteousness of God will be poured out on them. God, as we pray for the office of the presidency, as we pray for Donald Trump, as we pray for the cabinet, as we pray for their souls, as we pray for their hearts to be turned to you and for them to become believers and followers of Jesus Christ. God, I don't know no other way. I don't know no other way. I'm not here to debate anybody else's religion religion, anybody else's faith. I'm not here, but I know the relationship. It's so past in the name of Jesus. It's so past a religion. It's about relationship. And because we have relationship, he speaks to us and he downloads instruction. So the instruction up over your believer in the name of Jesus is to call forth the anointing for wealth in this season, to advance his kingdom, to help the homeless, to build homeless shelters, 
to be the, the conduit to build up our churches, to get our people out of debt in the name of Jesus, to be examples of what it is you have called for us to be. It is not your will for us to live in poverty. It is not your will for the believer to be beggars and borrowers and live in paycheck to paycheck and borrowing from Peter to pay Paul in the name of Jesus. We call forth supernatural debt cancellation in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that the testimonies will start to come in. I got this business deal. I got this connection, this door open because I tapped into and I called in and I pulled down. Hallelujah. The wealth of the wicked, of the billionaire, the millionaire, those who are storing it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, marble floors and mahogany desk and hallelujah. Key entry to buildings. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. I thank you for more than enough. I thank you for increase. I thank you for still being Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I thank you for being Jehovah Tiskanu, who is there to answer our prayers. God, I thank you. I thank you for being Adonai, my master. Hallelujah, my Lord and my savior. God, I thank you for these, your people. Hallelujah, God. Let somebody stretch forth, God, in faith, oh God. Hallelujah, believing God that he who promises is faithful. His word is true. It cannot return void. We will pray your word. Hallelujah. We will pray your word and we will not shrink back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I call forth supernatural debt cancellation. I call forth good stewardship with our finances. Hallelujah. We will be tithe payers. We will be those who give the extra in the offering. We will be on this.